So how many times it has happened with you that you need to lose some weight? For that, you get hold of a dietitian, then you get a diet plan. In that, you need to log in the calorie of each food which you are eating. And then you log in, you know, get into a calorie tracking app where basically you track the calorie of each food. Then you try to create a deficit so that you can lose weight. And you have been doing the calorie deficit for so many days, so many months, but you're not getting the results. So in today's episode, we are going to discuss why this calorie counting doesn't work and what essentially can be done so that you can achieve the sustainable results. So let's deep dive into it. So typically, the whole weight loss, this follows certain formula. Okay, This formula is known as energy balance equation okay so what is energy balance equation this is derived from the first law of thermodynamics which says the energy cannot be created or destroyed and energy can only be altered from one form to the other okay so that is a energy balance equation now what happens most of the health coaches most of the fitness instructors or you know dietitians typically they try to use this energy balance equation and they try to derive a typical a calorie deficit plan and they are what they tell and what most people think typically that if i have to lose weight or i have to gain the weight in that case it has to be a equation of calorie in minus calorie out and in other ways it should be like energy in or energy out now the calorie in should be less and the calorie out should be more so that it goes in the negative uh, equation negative weight and that actually leads for the weight loss now, if you want to weight, gain the weight in that case you need to increase the calorie in and you need to decrease the calorie out now because most people are looking for weight loss or fat loss typically that means i need to l reduce my number of calories i'm eating and i need to increase the kind of you know exercise or activity i'm going to do so what most people think that if i can eat less that means follow a strict diet or follow a low carb diet and I can do more exercise, more activity. Typically, I'm going to lose more weight and that is what most people think. Now, because of this, they want to create a deficit. A calorie deficit is basically a negative calorie balance, right? And that is what they do. And most of the time you see they are following keto plan or Atkins plan or paleo plan or some other diet plan where basically it is a low carb diet or detox diet and they try to go to the gym so that they can work on this equation smartly, okay? And they can get the results. But most of the time, this ends off in failure, okay? Now, why it fails? If the, the law of thermodynamics works, then why the calorie deficit doesn't work? Now, this is what you need to understand. Our body is very, very different, you know? Typically, the way the hormones, the every each and metabolism works, it's all different. So it doesn't, it follows the energy balance equation but there are certain variables which you need to consider. Now, the major problem with this method, okay, the major problem is that the first of all, this works only for the first time. That means let's say you have never done any calorie deficit or energy balance kind of thing. It works for the first time. It will give you results, okay? But it works better if you are young, like let's say 18 years or 19 years or less than, you know, 30 typically. And you have very good metabolism, healthy body. In that case, it will work. The calorie bal balance equation works for the ideal cases. It also works if you balance hormones. For example, insulin, your thyroid, all these things are balanced. You are not on medication, you know, steroids or any surgery you have gone through, nothing like that. Then it will work really good. But the problem with this method is it doesn't work for all cases. It doesn't work on a long run. For example, if you have done first time, it works great. How about the second time? How about the third time? It doesn't work. So if you work, work on the same thing again and again, the body gets used to it. The time body gets used to it, you know, it adapts very nicely to the, uh, you know, calorie balance equation. In that case, the time you start uh, eating less, it try to spend less energy. That means the calorie in, uh, calorie in when you reduce it, it automatically reduces the calorie out. It's like a mobile phone, a smartphone. Typically, if you see a smartphone, how it works. If you see the 100% you charge it, it goes smoothly and linear way to till 80%, 90, 70%, 60%. The time the mobile goes to 20%, it goes to a low power mode. In low power mode, it doesn't consume that much of energy. From 20% to 0%, it takes a lot of time. 
okay so that is what the body also like a mobile by smartphone your body is very smart in that case what it does the time you are reducing the calorie the reducing the food automatically the energy consumption is going to reduce in that case the weight is not going to change and that also because it has reduced the metabolism so any kind of diet you follow which is strict diet low carb diet or low calorie diet it actually kills the metabolism that's why you can see many people struggle to get results even if they have got the results they uh, they are find it very very difficult to sustain that so this is why this equation doesn't hold good for all cases though it holds good for certain cases it doesn't hold good for most of the cases now the question is then what to do in those cases how to get results if this equation is no more working for me if i am 40 years old if i know that i will not get results by doing a calorie deficit because i have certain medications i have certain hormonal problems of uh, you know my metabolism is slow then what can i what can be done so that i can get better results right so this is what we need to understand we need to understand certain role of our hormones which many of us are not aware of okay so first of all please understand that we all have certain hormones which play a much bigger role in deciding the metabolism and the way the food metabolizes in your body okay so these hormones significantly impact our weight now what did they do typically the hormones i'm talking about like insulin ghrelin leptin you know these control the appetite they control how much of fat we are going to store and also our metabolism so if your hormones are not balanced what essential happens it can lead to weight gain or you know it might make it very difficult for you to lose weight so that means our hormones have to be balanced so what you need to do we need to essentially understand the role of the hormones in our body in our weight management journey so that we can have more targeted and more effective strategies for the losing weight and that should be beyond following any strict diet or going to a gym and this is why we need to follow we need to understand which are the hormones which are playing a bigger role in deciding our weight loss first of all let's understand about insulin now insulin is not typically for the only diabetic people it is uh, secreted anytime you eat any food which is you know uh, for inside your body so what the insulin does it essentially it is a hormone which regulates the blood sugar okay and how it does it allows when you eat any kind of food the food breaks down to glucose in the body right and what insulin essentially does it stores this glucose in the body in the liver right for the future uses now what also insulin does it gives the blood sugar at certain levels so that it doesn't go too high or too low and any point of time you know it works good that means your insulin is working good that means your blood sugar is good but any point of time there is a problem there is something known as insulin resistance right in this case the body's insulin function is disrupted this can lead to weight gain in fact when an insulin resistance happens the body will tend to store more fat and this is what we need to understand the people who are obese typically they are insulin resistant secondly there is another hormone which i'm talking about which is leptin now leptin is a satiety hormone this decides when for example you are you are hungry or you are eating right now okay so this is something you know the any time any satiety that means leptin is typically produced by your fat cells okay it helps you to regulate the energy balance by inhibiting the hunger that means it helps to regulate the body weight so when you have more fat in the body more fat cells typically obese people they have more leptin okay and typically it tells the brain to eat less because already enough leptin is there but what happens if you are leptin resistant okay the leptin resistance can be really dangerous when you have leptin resistance the brain doesn't get a signal that it is already full so it will keep eating and that can lead you to weight gain and typically most of the obese people you can see they are either insulin resistant or they are leptin resistant or both the third is ghrelin now ghrelin is typically known as a hunger hormone and ghrelin is released uh, typically in the stomach and this signals to the brain when you are hungry like for example before having food let's say i mean typically in the morning early morning you get hungry and that is why the ghrelin is highest it tells the brain that i am hungry give me some food so you know and that is the prime when you are feeling the hungriest the ghrelin is very high and the time you finish eating the ghrelin levels go down so any time your ghrelin uh, levels are out of balance this can also lead you to increase hunger and also increase weight gain okay that is what you need to understand fourth one is uh, cortisol the cortisol is another hormone which you need to understand which is known as a stress hormone now what it does essentially 
whenever your body is in uh, any kind of stress now for example there is certain things like a, a fight or flight response right and that time the stress level stress hormones will be high that is fine but if you have a chronic uh, cortisol that means chronic stress hormone that can lead you to overeating inflammation and that can also lead to weight gain typically around your belly area okay so that is why stress hormones should be balanced as well and finally the fifth one is of uh, the thyroid hormones thyroid hormones we talk about t3 and t4 and this typically matters for many people who are in thyroid uh, you know uh, are not balanced they have difficult time to lose weight because thyroid hormones are produced by the thyroid gland and these thyroid hormones they regulate your basic metabolic rate right and also they influence how fast or how slow the body's metabolism can function so it influences how much calorie you're going to burn now if your thyroid levels are low this can actually slow down your metabolism that means you can gain more weight so why we are talking about all these hormones because many times if you see people who are obese they have a hormonal imbalance so anytime you are not balancing hormones your calorie balancing is not going to work and i'll tell you my story my experience when i was on a weight loss journey typically you know i my my dietitian gave me a plan you know typically it's a calorie deficit plan and it is like you know subtracting certain calories from my uh, typical bmr but that plan you know sometimes it did not balance uh, did not take into account my insulin all this uh, all this hormones so what is most important for you to understand is that first most pro- highest priority is balancing the hormones because they are going to decide your metabolism they are going to decide how the food is going to metabolize in the body how the food is going to be used as a stored energy or they are going to be used as a spent energy right so if that is not taken care uh, it is not going to give any results so what we need to understand we need to understand the hormones on our body right and how this hormones can interact with our body so that we can get a very valuable insight and we understand how you can manage your weight and also can maintain a healthy lifestyle because all these uh, hormones they can lead if any kind of imbalance they can lead to a lot of health problems for example insulin this can any kind of point of time you have insulin problem this can lead to type 2 diabetes cholesterol then you know th- you know the thyroid problems so these are all problems because of insulin resistance so understanding hormones is very important before you go for the weight loss so balancing the hormones why it is important mostly it is generally important if you want to have a healthy life i'm talking about a healthy life because weight loss is one part of the equation but only weight loss is not enough there are many thin people who are having heart attacks because the hormones are not balanced there are many thin people who are getting other challenges right health problems because the hormones are not balanced so they might have work on fitness but they're not work on being healthy so what is more important for us to balance the hormones so that we do not just focus on weight loss rather we focus on living healthier life living uh, a better life where basically you know we don't have any disease we are living a medicine free life we are living a life where we do not have to depend on hospitals to take care of ourselves rather we can take care of our own health so that if we can target a 50, 70 80 or 100 years of healthy life that means we need to understand how important that we need to take care of our hormones and once you do that the life is going to be more rock- lot more beautiful right i hope this uh, video made sense if you like it uh, subscribe to our channel and also type in the comment box how was uh, your comments how is uh, your feedback about it and see you in the next video thanks a lot